Hey everybody, welcome back to the Honey and Absent channel. We are your hosts, I'm Vincent, a background designer for animation. And I'm Janet, the ex-Disney artist turned independent creator. And in this video, you're going to watch me draw an Endeavor X Dabby commission from My Hero Academia. And if you watch to the end, you'll see how I turn it into a print. Yeah, and if you like what we do, click our like buttons over there and subscribe and uh, let's get into it. Yeah. All right, Endeavor and Dabby. Yeah, so I'm not entirely used to drawing big, buff, burly bara men. Yes, <laughs> that. So I have to draw everyone naked Ooh. first in order to really get the anatomy right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. That way you can uh, have the clothes rest on top of these naked bodices. Yes, and you know, for me, because I've been liking to uh, really exaggerate the muscles on these characters and have it come show through the um, clothing, be part of like their silhouette a little bit. I really need to go in there and really sculpt out those muscles and get that anatomy to really pop. Nice, and I like how Endeavor is kind of flat in the background, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool, but then Dabby's in the foreground and he's pushing perspective. He's a, he's a lot more dynamic. His hands jutting out like that. Yeah, I've been trying to experiment more with my compositions right. and foreshortening and that kind of thing. And I'm not sure if I'm the best at it yet, but I really like the effect in this piece. Yeah, it's cool. And now you're adding the details to the face. So once you get like a layout of like the bodies and the you know the anatomy, that's when you start putting on details and stuff, right? Yeah. So once the overall body is done, then is when I really go in and really detail out the face and things like the costume. Man, you had like a really intense face there, and you changed it to a friendlier face. I mean, I know a lot of people really like Debbie, uh, so I'm you don't want to make him too mean. Like, yeah, oh, I, I want to make him. Too and now see, now, he, now now his cloak is draping over his body and Endeavor's, you know, ornamentation really sits on top of his muscles. Yeah. That's really cool. And now I've started inking and I'm really trying to really carefully design the flames because I want it to look soft against <laughs> Endeavor's rock hard body. <laughs> mm. So you have these fluffy flame clouds and these rock hard muscles. Contrast. Yeah, I think it's a really nice look because everything else looks so rigid. Mm -hmm. The flames add a nice softness to yeah, it. Yeah, softness. Cool. And on the flames, you're adding a little bit of hatching just to indicate uh, it, it, it brings out the shape. You know, yeah. if you didn't do that, it looked like a flat shape. It helps kind of guide the eye too to know what direction it's going yeah. in because I, I otherwise you don't know the flames kind of undulate mm. in space too, not just on the contours. You're really getting into the inking here. So we're using a rosemary brush here with Sumi ink. Yes. Right? Nice. Something that I figured out with like spikier hair in anime, the way that I like to do it is to make it fluffier. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if, like I imagine Gabby's hair is kind of like this really fluffy shaggy hair. So that's how I inked it. Instead of that really harsh, jagged, iconic shape that you're used to seeing him at, it, it matches this more realistic style a little bit more, I think. Cool, and you're adding the burnt textures to him. Burnt yeah. chicken nugget, as the kids say, right? Yeah, that texture is so difficult. When I first drew Gabby the first time, um, I think he's actually still in our online store. I had a hard time balancing the texture of the the burns because I thought it would be too overwhelming. Hmm. But you know, I actually think that's just part of him. I I think people who know who he is will appreciate it. And I love how um, the manga artist does it. It's crazy. There's so much texture. It's yeah. texture upon texture. Texture upon texture, I remember. I think the tone makes it so yeah, it's not so tone. intense. Yeah. yeah. Now you're adding this dark, dark in the back so that pushes everything forward. Yeah, because cool. I wanted it to do this thing where the, the flames look like they're glowing. So I needed a really, really dark background. Oh, look at that. that comic booky kind of dark shape pattern you're doing for his muscles. Yeah. That's something you see in like a like a comic book. That's crazy. It's it's definitely a technique I picked up from looking at a lot of comic artists. Yeah, and just for lunch sometimes, Janet and I would go to the nearby, you know, market, sit down, and we'd watch Jim Lee. Yeah. <laughs> we'd just sit there and watch Jim it, Lee. Somehow, <laughs> just watching him, just like if you guys are watching this, it somehow like soaks it into your brain. Oh yeah. Like you, you get better at art just by witnessing it, I guess. Yeah, that's like listening to your favorite musicians, I guess, if you're a musician. It's like watching your favorite artists make art. Mm -hmm. It inspires you to do yeah. your own stuff. 
So with Gabby's um, cloak, the hard part is it's black. So I need to like really balance where it shows. So like behind his torso, for example, I could I you can't just cover it completely in black, otherwise you won't see his torso. Right, right, right. Man, that's crazy. And you're adding shine. Yeah. This uh, soft gray tone, this wash is really adding dimension to stuff. Yeah, it's usually when you're inking, try not to leave anything just flat white because it really like flattens the image and adding just a little bit of tone even if it's white like his shirt is technically white mm -hmm. um it really helps bring it out because if you just leave it white it, it it's not as interesting to look at i remember i was doing my own thing from work and then i walked over and i watched you do this weird technique where you were squeezing the ink directly onto the bond paper and painting around it yeah so it's really the only way to get some the saturation that bright mm. if, is if it comes directly from the bottom. I see. So this is actually something we learned from landscape painting. Yeah, they okay. would tell us all the time not to, to do that. Do, to not to do this. Yeah, because of that reason. It's because too of the saturated. saturated. Yeah, but because you want that effect, mm -hmm. you <laughs> went straight for straight out of the do, straight out of the bottle mm -hmm. ink. That's and then crazy. I blended it outwards with wow. orange and red. Cool. And because. This piece is kind of really red dominant. I wanted to add a little bit of um, blue to the background. And I had to paint up the faces and I had to add little variations of color pencil mm -hmm. to the face and Endeavor's face just to give them some life. Yeah, and you like to do this thing where you add a little bit of red, mm -hmm. uh, red gradient to cheeks or fingertips and things yeah. like that, noses especially. And it really helps when I eventually go in with um, white. So yeah, again here I'm adding a little bit of like a blue gradient. Nice, and look at these highlights, they're really pushing everything. A hard thing to do is to do this lighting technique um, with so many different inks involved and colors and all this stuff. So I left it to the very end to just kind of chisel out certain things to make it pop and to add light effects. So and that the sparkles. Yes, the sparkles. you can't you can't not have the sparkles. Yeah, of course. You really kind of have to plan it in your mind. When you're doing these highlight things, do you ever think of like what you did? previously because we made such a big deal about those highlights on Hawks' feathers mm -hmm. in the previous drawing. Yeah, so I've been using doing that a lot more oh, wow. with these pieces because it really, I think, pops. The, it's it's an extra chance to add a little bit of pop, mm -hmm. to separate the image a little bit from each other because um, like I, I put an outline around Dabby in order to bring him away from Endeavor. And it's something that was really hard to achieve by like in the inking phase, so I left it with just straight like white ink. Dang. Signature, there you go. Yeah. Man, I hope this person really enjoyed this drawing. Yeah, so I take a flat lay, nice. I take a photo, some scans, and then I turn it into a print. Oh, there you go. So here I have brought it into Photoshop, and now I'm using just some um, layer masking to add some colors and highlights to areas that, you know, I couldn't do traditionally. Nice. Like these like crazy neon high saturation things that like I think you could do that with gouache mm -hmm. But if you do it digitally, I mean so much faster and easier to control Yeah, and I'm basically playing around with a bunch of different layer styles So for the white highlights, I think I'm using something like a screen And then for stuff like that is like an overlay to bring out like highlights I really really like this traditional digital look man It's, it's really, really good. It's really cool looking I can just add on top of what is already there yeah. Yeah. Oh man, see those glows? You need an airbrush to make those glows in traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. Just a pain in the butt. Look at that. Just like just a little bit of airbrush in there. Yeah. Makes it looks like the thing's glowing. That's so crazy. I take the opportunity to add color where there isn't any or add highlights or right. like glow effects where you can't do that traditionally. Just like there on the blue flames and stuff like that. And nothing too much. Occasionally just brightening up some stuff with color dodge, adding highlights and shadows here and there. For really keeping the texture of the paper underneath. Yeah. So using a lot of layer styles and stuff like that. Yeah. It's still, it's still, you're still trying to let the drawing breathe. Mm -hmm. I think if you paint it on top of it too much, it would kind of look too digital at a certain point. Yeah. So it's that's a balancing act, right? piece. Yeah. Nice. If you like this video, like the video over there, subscribe and leave a comment down below for who you think Janet should draw next. All the materials that I used in this video will be linked down below. And if you would like your own 
original ink commission, head over to honeyandabsinth.com. And you can also support us by buying our merch. I'm wearing the fight shirt today. And find us wherever you can find us. Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, we're everywhere. And don't forget to dare to dream.